Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover, and right now, in episode 5, we're going back in time and making sure that uh, we are going down a more reformist route. Now, instead of finishing this part of the tree first, I've gone ahead and finished most of the other trees here. Not completely, but somewhat. In which we need to talk about the form of the Grand Sabor. The Zemsky Sabor, or Assembly of the Lands, was a parliament in Russia active during the 16th and 17th centuries, created with the purpose of advising and assisting the Tsar and the administration of Russia. Though times have changed significantly since the first Azemsky Sabor, the need for a ruler or for assistance has not. At the urging of Petlin's reformist wing, the Grand Sabor, or the Grand Assembly, is to be established and act as a parliament for the Baz, similarly advising him and helping him to administer the Far East, just as its predecessor did so many centuries ago. A Feroz model. As we debate over how to administrate a landmass as large as Russia, we would be remiss not to consider the Feroz model. The advantages of a federal form of government are numerous. For example, by allowing each individual province or, or territory some amount of autonomy and independence from the federal government, we allow for more personalized policy to be created for each region. Additionally, such a system encourages political participation from our citizens and reduces overall administrative strain on the national government. Though it may weaken the Vaz power, it may also help secure his rule. The Grand Sabor, within the office of Magadan, Nikolai Petlin, allowed himself a small smile. For the first time in years, he could reasonably say that he was hopeful for the future. After months of careful maneuvering, he had convinced Mikowski to allow a primitive legislative body to be formed. The Grand Sabor was barely worth a name, but it was a start. The Vaz was still the ultimate power in Magadan, as he was not about to give up more than token influence over the nation. In fact, getting Mikowski to relinquish even what little power that was given to the Sabor was almost miraculous in and of itself. But even so, a victory had been scored for the people of Russia, as minor as it was. It was clear to Petlin that Mikowski thought the matter closed, that the token reforms he'd allow would be the end of the discussion. He believed that he could simply go back to closing his mailed fist ever tighter around the Russian people, but Nikolai knew in his heart that he had only just begun. The Russian people had suffered for so long, and they deserved so much more than a council that would rubber stamp Vaz Mikowski's decrees. It would be difficult and very dangerous, but he would do all he could to bring about a Russia that his people could be proud of, one step at a time. And uh, let's wait to do that one. Let's do Reform the Black Shirts. The Black Shirts, as an organization, have been widely condemned as violent thugs and enforcers nationwide, and many calling for its ab abolishment. abolishment. The Baz would never agree to such a radical measures like that, but he may agree to reform the Black Shirts into something else. They have a large manpower pool, have experience with enforcing and handling violence, have decent recruitment standards, and have offices and locations nationwide. The answer is clear. We should reform the Black Shirts organization into a police force. Everything else is there, and with a few adjustments to leadership and operating standards, we could begin policing the nation with a legitimate and competent police force within just a few weeks. So we get some more political power too, but eh, we lose some cost. But strength and reformists, which is what we're shooting for. Um, we can still do stuff over here. Um, I haven't done any of this stuff yet, but because the reformers are probably going to win regardless. They're at 31% now, which is not too bad. But reform the black shirts. Cool. Expand on the bill? Oh, yes, please. We lose some political power, which sucks, but oh, well. Years ago, Petlin penned the Siberian Bill of Rights to appeal for American aid. Given that Mikowski was the leader of our nation and political party, he took credit for it and ins insisted on putting as many adjustments to the bill as possible to ensure that the Vaz power and government wouldn't be significantly affected. Though our Vaz has done a great many things for the country, it might be best to allow Petlin to improve on the bill through his political maneuverings and get rid of those loopholes. What Mikowski doesn't know won't hurt him. Also, like, we're just waiting to, like, improve society more and more and more, so... Pretty normal for our stage in Russia right now. Oh! Africa died. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, my goodness. Uh, let's get some better fighters. Yes, please. Also, we are already maxed out for agriculture, so that's why I'm not doing it. Um, Let's see. Let's see. If you want to read about subsidized Radio Free Magadan again, please go right ahead. We'll do that one next. Uh, to protect and serve, Trofim had not in his wildest dreams ever thought he would be wearing the uniform of a police officer. A longtime member of the Russian fascist party, he had spent many years escaping from or avoiding capture by the police of various states. As such, when he first heard that the black shirts were beginning to be reformed into a police force, he thought it was a joke. He quickly realized that, as uh, always with the case when the Vaz proclaimed a change, it was no joke. At first, he had not liked the change, though he would have not dared to voice that thought in the black shirts. He had been used to doing what was necessary, without much thought to legal regulations. That was no longer the case, and yet he found that he did not mind the rules as much as he had once had, because they allowed him to realize something he had always wanted. Acceptance. But people passed, on him, passed him on the street now, after the initial period of distress, of course, they no longer regarded him with constant suspicion and fear. After he had worked to capture some low-level criminals, some had even taken to greeting him. He liked that feeling. He liked the feeling on some level that he was helping people as he helped his country towards its natural destiny. He liked that, and he gave thanks to the boss for his opportunity, a surprising change of heart. Seems kind of forced, but whatever. 
Um, expanded on the belt, looked towards Washington. Russia was once a part of a vast and varied land, just as the people of Russia were a vast and varied peoples. The USA, I think they mean. From the Kazakhs in Central Asia to the Ukrainians in Eastern Europe, our nation was accommodating to everybody. If we were to one day reunite Russia and take our place as masters in both Europe and Asia, our nation too must be open to peoples of all creeds and nationalities, just like our friends across the Atlantic and the US. We should begin reforming our immigration laws and letting people, or letting people begin bringing in more foreign workers into the country. Oh, we can do something here. Seek foreign support, because we can. We'll do it once. Why not? And we have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm. Yeah, but like for agriculture here, um, it's already modern, so there's no point doing it. Getting more building slots would be nice, though. It would be very nice. Need to get more resources. Get some more fuel. Yeah, why not? Improved APCs are nice. Can we build anything else here? No. That kind of sucks. But that's okay. We're getting some better tanks. Get some of that done. And there you go. Cool. So we do have some comments to go through as well. Such as, uh, do the open rift in the console command to play as Legio the Ninth Hispania? Yeah, maybe eventually. It'd be kind of cool. Uh, so, yeah. Eventually. Not sure when, but eventually. Maybe we'll, well, I'll start a campaign sometime that time and just go from there. Um, if you want to read about all Russian Council of Corporations, please go right ahead, but we're going to the line of opportunity. The most powerful and transformative force on the planet has been seen time and time again to be the free market. If the free market has the power to transform an agrarian backwater like the U.S. into an industrial superpower, capable of exporting its influence across the world. We can certainly utilize it to transform our nation from a cold eastern outcropping to the industrial trade center of Russia. We should begin deregulating the economy and opening up more sectors of the economy for the private sector to seize on. Ours will be a Russia where every man is entitled to the sweat of their brow. Which, eh, it's not bad. Nothing really to complain about that there. That's a construction. Uh, yeah, get more industry. That would be very nice. And we're building up quite nicely, I'll be honest. Free radio, if you want to read about that, please go ahead. There's no loyalty without freedom. Cool. So what are we missing here? Guns. Everything else seems to be okay, though. Just need a lot more guns. Which we can't get anymore. What it means to be free. Uh, welcome back to Radio Free Magadan. Sergei exclaimed, next stacks grin across his face. I'm sure you must be wondering what I'm so happy about, dear listeners. <sighs> Our audience can't see you, Sergei. Vasily's smooth baritone came. Uh, just get on with it. Yes, 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 of course, Sergei agreed. As giddy as a child on Christmas. I'm happy, listeners, because the Siberian National Republic has finally agreed to subsidize us with a content as free as ever. Radio Free Magadan isn't just freer than ever, it's richer. Sergei cracked oh, with glee, still scarcely able to believe it. A small, rare smile spread across Vasily's face. He could not blame him with how, it had, with how hard it was to believe they had truly come far. So let us thank our generous sponsor by starting off the show talking about them. Sergei? Vasily mentioned for his co-host to speak, yes, recently. I've heard some talk that over in America, people are guaranteeing the right to assemble. A right to assemble? Can you believe it, Vasily? A Sergei exclaimed. Without wanting or waiting for a response, he continued. I'm starting to wonder, why don't they just let us do that here? It could be of great benefit. Just look at how powerful the Americans are. Vasily considered this a moment, nodding slowly. You know, Sergei, for once you might have a point. Fascism is a fad. Radio is forever. Ah, it's always fun listening to the radio. I mean, not always, but usually fun. Yeah, keep doing that, because that's still good for us to do. Uh, keep building that stuff up. Because it's so, like I said, good for us to do. <laughs> Until we kill the enemies off. If you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. It's going to hurt a PP, but whatever. And then we'll do the Enduring World of People. If you want to do that again, please go right ahead as well. Deal with the rival faction? Yes, please. Um, get some more tank stuff, because you can. So we're going to spend, 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 spend. Poverty relief is what exactly what we want. And then hiring for foreign dudes. But free enterprise. During the warlord period of the Far East, Magadan's trade policy was made rather restrictive and limited. This wasn't so much for the protection of our industry as so much it was for the national security. Agents and other malcontents were finding it rather easy to slip back and forth across the border with minimal interference when acting under the guise of businessmen and traders. When word got about and around about how simple it was to move people and goods across the border, the people were demanding action. The party agreed to put forth a series of restricted trade laws and border regulations. However, some times are different now, and if we wanted to lose the, lose the full power of capitalism, and loosen the full power of capitalists and the free market of the economy, we're going to have to repeal those laws. Nice. There you go. Nice. And where are we at? We're at 7.2% is not too bad. That's really not too bad at all. And we're done building civvies. Lies. Lies. I just told you a lie. Yay. I lied. Yay. Huh. I want guns, though. Are we at... We're still very high, which is nice. Very good. Awesome. So then we'll do that one, and then we'll do Made in Russia again. 
Uh, we'll do our Russia first. Yeah, we'll do Made in Russia first, probably. And then we'll come back and do this one. Just because we've got a couple stuff here to do. Um, I do want to see what the event is like when we get rid of some other group. You know, the laborists. But yeah, if you worry about better army professionals, please go ahead. Excellente. Not bad. Not bad at all. And then we'll do Made in Russia. If you want to do that again, please go ahead. So I'm going to save this one for the end as well. I'm going to force this to go through no matter what. So I'll use Consequent to get this as well. So Because we we failed last time. Under own two feet. So I don't want to fail again. Failing is not fun. Also, I we are making some 40 combo wits if you're interested. So yeah, we'll hope they do okay. I haven't made any tank divisions really yet. So she does sort of suck, but whatever. Um, APCs we have the enduring will of the people with Main Russia, and there you go. Nice. Uh, let's look at this. Let's call these tanks. Cool. Heavy machinery, good. Um. So these are going to be tanks. Thirty-five. Um, remove that one and just throw them all on this side here. APCs and remove. There's fifty. So that's not too bad. That's kind of what we set up last time too. Uh, you know what? Since we're here, uh, you know, do that one. Replace you with the main battle tanks. And throw in some more arty. There you go. Something. It's not great, but it's something. To start off with. Still very high? Oh, expose the tyrant. Look at that. Yes. <coughs> An atypical meeting. It was a typical meeting for the RNLP, nothing too large on today's agenda for the Vaz, but appearances were important. Mikhail stood in accepting the greetings of a few laborists, the glances of several reformists, and the silence of the room largely. It was quiet today, a small miracle, not having to do with the bickerings of his own party. Nikolai Petlin came to the podium, and Mikhail waited to see what was he to hear was on first on the agenda. The first word of business on the agenda of the arrest of Mikhail Mikowski. Nikolai stated calmly with a single bit of iron to his helm. The Vaz froze and then blinked. Had he heard that right to rest him for a moment? He assumed it was a joke, a single bit of dry humor from a man who wanted his position. However, no one in the party protested, no one in the party laughed or raised their voice. The laborers he had just greeted just minutes ago turned pale, and the room remained utterly silent. For numerous crimes against both Russia and the Russian people, Nikolai continued. But Mikhail was no longer listening. How could this have happened? How did this happen? It wasn't possible. It wasn't. But as he stood there with a dumbfounded expression, he shock written across his face as the guards moved, not to arrest Petlin or to shoot him on the spot. Traitor, the former Vaz whispered once quietly as the guards moved to restrain him. Traitor, you dude. You and your reformers, every last one of you, you dude. You can't. Arms wrapped around his own, rage, fear, and sorrow compressed into a single scream. None of his own clique looked at him as he's dragged away. The guards ignored his pleas, and Nikolai Petlin, the spineless foreign minister, his subordinate, his replacement, looks him in the eye the entire time he's dragged out. You did do this to me. You can't do this to me. Yep, and there's Petlin. If you want to read about him, please go ahead. There's a native of Hava not an emigre. Cool. Do we change anything else here? Well, we got Petlin in now. Looks okay. Looks kind of a little nerdy. Hey, Bennett went. I gotta play Bennett still before Toolbox 3 comes out, which it'll never come out, but whatever. Um. A new beginning. For Nikolai Petlin, the last few days have been a will one of confusion and danger. The Tyrant Mikowski was in chains, arrested in a moment of weakness by a man he had thought to be so below him, to be more, to be more than a bug than man. Petlin's supporters held the form of Oz and secure so with Magadan under close guard. It was almost enough to make him laugh, the sheer luck that it had been necessary for the success of the coup boggled the mind. His co-conspirators had risked it all over to the Tyrant, and Mikowski had been, ironically, more than his, more like his hated rival, Rajevsky, he would have likely ended Petlin's rebe rebellion before it begun. Thankfully, his arrogance had blinded him to the threat brewing under his nose. Now, a similar trouble brewed even as he sat overlooking the city. In the depths of his new office, Petlin found himself in a very precarious situation. While Mikowski was safely behind bars, support for the Tyrant of Magadan was high in the army and the security service. It would be a perilous task in and of itself to prevent Mikowski's supporters from retaking control of the government, but it would be a necessary one for the people of Russia to prosper. Mikowski's tyranny needed to be left in the dustbin of history. We can finally begin the great work. Finally. I wonder what else we can do now. Yes, welfare. And we're out of PP. Darn it. Cool, cool, cool. And so the goal is now to get all the way to uh, 
uh, the last stage. I don't think I'm going to take out uh, Germany again, just because there's literally nothing there, new unique content. But uh, there was a comment saying that if I do it, would do this again, like keep make sure that Germany keeps Austin. If someone says it makes more historical sense, you could say. So we'll see. I went next time I do this, so uh, I'm not opposed to it. I'll put it like that. I'm, I'm definitely not opposed to it. So we'll see you next time, though. We'll see you next time. All right, and let's go and do. Uh, let's see, is that everything else? Yes. Let's one city to city upon hill. Yes. Prepare for war, pretty much. Let's get going. A grand showdown, pretty much. And we got 481 more people, which is nice. Um. Yeah, I wish we had more so social development stuff, but it has to be balanced. So yeah, I'm gonna do this anyways. American Siberian Trade Act. The government has been made official announcement across the Far East, and Nikolai Palin has been successful in negotiating a treaty that will become known as the Siberian American Trading Act. Vast celebrations have been planned by the government, who have been declared the day as a signing to be a national holiday, and have even promised to give workers reduced hours on the holiday. The signing of this act is a huge step towards official recognition by the U.S., and will prove to be a massive boon to our economy. We can expect to see the effects of this treaty almost immediately, with decreased tariffs and official American shipping lanes now stopping in the port of Magadan. We're sure that our exports and the associated profits will skyrocket as American markets begin the first taste of the invaluable raw materials extracted from our Siberian tundra. If you want to read about this, please go to head. Um, let's see. Yeah. So now instead of having Mikoski do this, it's now Petlin. Um. I think. Well, maybe I haven't read this one. Petlin watched with a small smile from the window of his office as the everyday people of his town of Magadan went about their lives. They're much happier, much more fulfilled now than they used to be, especially when compared to the dark days just after the separation from Rozhevsky's forces. Those days were long past now, though, and Petlin preferred to think about happier, more current events. One such thing that occurred or occupied his mind was his imminent visit to the Washington, or D.C. It was amazing. It was actually happening when he thought about it. He hadn't really thought he would be able to do it. Now that all that remained was to finish what work he could he could, as hired aides, packed his luggage and prepared his papers before he left tomorrow. Petlin could only dream of what uh, finery awaited him in D.C., the great city of democracy. Soon he would not have to dream. He will get to experience it, to enjoy it himself. He, once he had, he will get right back to arranging all, for all other Russians to be able to enjoy that same luxury right here in their own homeland. For now, though, Petlin put those thoughts aside as he stepped away from the window and sat down an, at his desk to return to his work. Dreams could wait when the work to achieve them could be done. Dreams of democracy. It better happen. It better happen, man. A break from his comment. Petlin relaxed in a chair, exhausted from the events of his trip, letting out a sigh, wondering if he had done his, done well. Better than Mikoski would have done, perhaps, but that was low-hanging fruit and didn't necessarily mean he was successful. Still, he thought as he leaned back into his luxurious seat, feeling his worries wash away, it was a wonder in itself to enjoy finery in a hotel like this. Nothing in Siberia compared. The Americans truly did not know how good they had it. Speaking of the Americans, their welcome had certainly warmed him. Russian ex expatriates and American lovers of democracy alike had cheered his arrival on the tarmac, and Petlin couldn't help but to wave at them as he repassed with a stupid grin on his face. He felt like a soldier returning home from a victorious war. Once he had been settled in, he had met the president himself for a series of surprisingly productive talks about topics ranging from cooperation against the Japanese aggressors to the expansion of economic ties between Siberia and the U.S. When questioned on political reform, Petlin pre pre presented a concrete plan of gradual but certain democratization assuaging the fears of the Americans. Though meeting one of the world's most powerful men in the room had certainly been intimidating, he turned out to be a reasonable man, and soon Petlin's anxieties had calmed. Ha, ah, everyone loves Mormon money bags, Be Bennett. The dinner that followed the talk was the best meal Petlin had eaten in years, and the applause that he had earned upon giving a toast to a world without tyranny made him feel like a hero. Petlin felt fairly confident that it made for a strong diplomatic showing to mark the emergence of the Siberian National Republic onto the world stage, falling asleep where he sat. He began to dream of that feeling of heroism he had quickly come to love. Even a mouse dreams of bravery. Come on, they've got to give it to us, right? They've got to give it to us. A successful deal, yes, they did. Our diplomats anxious nerves have been calmed by incredible news. Our efforts to negotiate with the USA were a resounding success, although initially put off by the Siberian National Republic's fascist past. The Americans ultimately decided that having an ally in the Siberian region outweighed other considerations. The recent delegation to Washington appears to have been a significant factor in assuaging their fears, and the president signed onto the deal with a little opposition from the rest of the government. The agreement between the U.S. and SNR outlined significant political and economic cooperation and the expansion of trade between the two countries, a communication line between both countries' leadership, and a number of other provisions ensuring a firm working partnership for the years to come, surrounded by rivals, such as an opportunity could not have come sooner. Long isolated from the outside world, we could finally have a lifeline and want to one superpower, to boot. The mood in Magadan tonight will be a celebratory indeed, and promotions in the diplomatic staff are almost guaranteed to come soon. Nice work, everybody. Now that is what exactly what we wanted. New Horizons. Um, if you want to read about this one, again, please go right ahead. It's the same thing with Canada, Mexico, Australia, New Zealand. As well as the world beckons. As we're pr pretty much getting ready to kill off other Russians. Which we love to do. 
Because we love, 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 we're out of a lot of guns, so that sucks. Yeah, I don't know. This campaign has just been pretty good. I have no regrets playing this campaign. It's been a lot of fun. Like, usually, if I if I'm playing a campaign, I usually say it's a lot of fun. But like, I don't know. I've enjoyed this campaign. The American Siberian Trade Act of '69. With a flash of a camera and the shake of a hand, the Americans have officiate officialized their relationship with our republic. But long before, the ships will dock in the port of Magadan, bearing great wealth for our regime to use in our civilization of the Siberian wastes. Agreements between our two nations, the American Siberian Trade Act, formally requires us to grab the American access to Siberian resources in exchange for the immense riches they can deliver in the great fleet of ships. The Vaz, noting the terms of the settlement, was reporting to Smirk. Reported to Smirk and said quite comfortably, knowing now he has secured formal American support. Uh, before long, we expect to see the port stuffed with American vessels hauling tons of fuel, arms, supplies, and munitions so we may gain the upper hand against our adversaries in the east. Our time spent foraging for food and stealing equipment from our neighbors in the cover of nights is over. We demand prosperity from Siberia, and prosperity we shall have. Our American friends will sponsor our move to civilize the wastes and wilderness into a republic worthy of the name Russia. To a bountiful relationship, my friends. It's always good to have good relationships. Well, usually. Because <laughs> so, sometimes you got to turn those relationships and make them real sour. But anyways, we're not here to talk about my life. We're here to talk about the game. Honestly, we could probably use more artillery too, since we're just waiting for more stuff here anyways. Um, infrastructure would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, drop tanks. There you go. How many planes do we have? We keep doing stuff about that stuff, but... World beckons. Of course, we know manpower, so. Yeah, we don't got much here, do we? <laughs> yeah, we really don't. Oh, look at this. We got a couple of ships. New trade opportunities. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Things are starting to look up. Oh, it's Australia. You know what? I'll read this once. Left hanging. Russian Nikolai Petlin's desk, returning messages were delivered to Magadan from across the Pacific. We've heard back from a calls for support. The democracy of the free world have offered their hands to establish official diplomatic relations with the Republic, and will begin official and formal communications in the next coming weeks. Shipping vessels dock in the ice to port of Magadan, bearing the flags of our foreign allies, arriving with hundreds of tons of supplies for a young Republic. Shaking hands with envoys and international observers, we have most certainly made a name for ourselves throughout the globe and found friends across the great Pacific Ocean. We are far from a stable and cement position we work tirelessly towards, but our efforts to civilize and govern Siberia no longer go unnoticed by the observing free world. Australia said yes. And this one is what? Uh, it's hard to tell. There you go. Abramov, yay! And this one says, Canada, yay! We love Canada, yay! Canada! Mexico! Mexico! Why do you disappoint us, Mexico? But yeah, we're going straight to war with these guys. Russian, kill them all off, have a good time, you know, the standard stuff. Standard ritual. Um, not be bad to do either. The wall beckons. U.S. Japanese talks begin. Sweep westward. Future and beyond. Oh, we just go immediately. I, I'm surprised by that too, yeah. Oh my goodness. Hopefully we do okay. Oh, look at that manpower. Nice. Thank God we got more manpower to do this. We need to save some of that peepee. -pee. Still not too bad though. Okay, so why did you just do that? To get encircled, man? Did I give you orders? I did not give him orders. God dang it. Oh, actually I did. It should be okay. Anything here? Anything there? No. And close out of that one for now. You'll be fine. Nice. We go for more gun stuff. We're really far, quite behind on it, so... Get to Konsk. Seriously, just capitulate them and they'll be fine. <coughs> A few more guns would be nice. Insurrection in Oman. They're not giving up yet? Oh. Alright, well, whatever. Just go all the way and you'll, you'll be fine. I'm not really worried about this at all. Oh. You win there, you can circle and kill them off. Well... There goes those guys. Krasnoyarsk? Hey, you guys go right there, man. The faster you capitulate, the faster everyone's going to actually be able to survive here. Hmm. 
Nice. Come on. Go, 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 go. Drive, drive, drive. Nice. A boon to be sure. And a happy one at that. Where is it? Why is the capital so far down there, man? Oh, more divisions, nice. Nothing too difficult. Oh, yeah, Kansk. Yes, please. That'll be good to do immediately. Kamrovo, thank you. Very good, very good, very good. Ah, oh, the basin's captured. Nice. Ah, they lost the junction. We got the basin. We got the junction. We lost the basin. We keep getting and losing things. Yay. Any upgrades? Nope, that sucks. Go and core that stuff, that's fine for now. Novus will be would be nice. Bisk? Banal? You lost 5,000 versus 15,000, not bad. <clears throat> to the skies, my friends, to the skies. Very good, very good. Tomsk it is. Barnal. Nice. Oh no, we lost it. And we got him. Oh no. Really just yay. Cool. Did we win? I think we won. Cool. So, so much for this stuff. We're going to grab that real quick so we can get some more uh, uh, speed. So, there we go. And we'll go in immediately to kill them all off if we can. Yay! Oh. Nice. Now just do that for now. Just do that. There we go. 24 divisions. There you go. Good luck. Also, good luck with this, too. We will not have enough tanks for this, but that's okay. Uh, if you want to do this one, please go ahead. Boom. And anything else? Improve, increase military investment. Just go straight to war with them, probably. Look at that manpower. Nice. Just do that. Yeah. And of wonders. So be it. So be it. So much for that one. And we're done with that one, too. And how many guns are we out? Actually, we're doing okay. After capitulating them. We need more tanks, though, of course. But whatever. A uh, new dawn for the Republic. After no small amount of bloodshed, political intrigue, and economic struggles, we finally managed to unify almost all of Siberia. From humble beginnings in the freezing port of Magadai under the president, it seems as if it was forever ago that we barely were clinging onto our lives. However, much work still has to be done. We're still planning on pushing westwards to reunify the entirety of Russia. There's also much to do with domestically. The former boss, tyrant and dictator Mikhail Mikovsky, once promised sweeping reform to placate the people and to create the illusion of cooperation to attract the investment of the Americans. However, his words were ingenuine and his promise is false. Now that he's been removed from power, we can focus on real, meaningful reform. Siberian Spring. Uh, How's this one? Depoliticize armed forces. Despite all the best efforts, we've witnessed a rise of corruption and cronyism within our armed forces. Even from the earliest days following the trumping of the Banner King Rozhevsky and the Tsar Sachita. Plenty of officers maintain political ties, especially worrying are the ones who find themselves close with the laborist wing of a party. Those who could support the would support the tyrant. Mikowski. This cannot and will not stand. Our administration has worked too hard to marginalize. Mikowski supporters and too much has been risked to allow simmering uh, military support to boil over in a coup. We must invest those, or investigate those, who have ties with the laborists, or any political wing. We should remove the worst, marginalize the others, and by doing so ensure that the military works for the government and not the other way around. The New Republic. <clears throat> Pentland adjusted his glasses as he entered Mikowski's office. In the old RFP headquarters in Magadan, the place definitely seemed, uh, seemed lived in. The shot glasses of neat whiskey in them, the bottles of vodka just gathering dust later on the desk from where the former boss had just sat, or was sat once. Mikowski likely knew that he was being arrested and prepared himself accordingly. Petland did not just expect him to indulge in alcohol in the twilight hours of the political career. Outside, the wind howled, pounding the window panes with savage force. Petland wanted to shiver, but he was not cold. He remembered the sight of Mikowski as the guards hauled him away to the prison, awaiting trial. 
A pair of bloodshot eyes and a pale face that screamed utter defeat. Once he had believed that Makovsky was somewhat of a good man, standing up against the black shirts and the savage barbarity that was commonplace in Habin were virtuous deeds. When Patlin proposed a Siberian Bill of Rights, the old Vav seemed excited at the prospect of a renewed gesture. A political reform, however, right in his office, a few years ago, he remembered as Makovsky tore at his belt, decrying his ideas as too liberal. Then came the Dalstroy scandal, and Makovsky was a monster all along. No more Habin, Patlin said to Makovsky. No more atrocities, no more ideologies. They're the basis to the levels of beasts. He strode into Makovsky's favorite gramophone and turned it on. March of the Siberian Rifleman filled the air. He picked up an empty shot glass and toasted to Comrades Long Gone. Uh, to the memories of Hobbin. Cool. And if you want to read about this one, please go ahead, because we're going to do that again. Uh, cooperative federalism. Losing even more political power, darn it. Hope for Siberia. Shadow of the Vaz. Not bad, not bad. You got a lot of rebuilding to do, man. Good. <laughs> Depoliticize the armed forces? You bet we're going to do that. And Siberian Spring, why not? Since our conquest of Central Siberia, we've held a tenuous grasp on the territories of the best. However, it's imperative that we make sure that we integrate them, extending our administration westwards, and ensure that we have a concrete grip on our new lands. This way, we'll make more in tax revenue, have a larger pool of manpower to draw recruits from, and have a larger wall of, uh, well of industry to ensure that the war weapons of war that we need that to win the unification of Russia will be readily available to our brave soldiers. To do this, there are a number of things that we can do, however. Paramount among them is assurance of rights and liberty for all Russians within our borders, and the education of those Russians on the importance of liberty and freedom. And the benefits of that those concepts, and by extension of our administration, bring them an old admiral. <clears throat> um, Ivan Stepanovich Yumashev walked through the streets of Petroplavovsk in the early hours of the morning. The former admiral observed the people as they went about their business. Men and women on their way out to factories and shops. Parents and children hurried about to grocers to fill their pantries. And some simply sat on the benches and observed the passing of the day. A smile broke out on his face when he saw a young soldier guide his scared child back to her parents. Every once in a while, a former sailor of the Pacific Fleet would approach him and they would talk of life since the dark days in Kamchatka. The former, the younger, would boast of the pregnant wives and new, new children and the elders of grandchildren and the relatively easy lives they live now. The Admiral always took time to speak with these men to hear their problems and their triumphs. When his men needed help, he would do his best to give it, and when they all needed, and when they all needed, and when all they needed was an ear to listen to, he was all happy but to do so. Ivan eventually found his usual haunt, a bunch of bench, a small bench under the shade of a great old pine tree facing out in the waters of the Pacific. As he saw, he thought back to the good old days, or just days. The days after the end of the Great Patriotic War, the, as the Pacific fleet slowly but surely came together in Petropavlovsk. He remembered the hard times when the fleet, once the part of the Union in the East, were forced to prey on shipping lanes in order to survive. He thought back to the divine mandate's fall to the fascists of the National Republic, the very same republic he now lived in. It was a strange time for the fleet, as the fascists were soon ousted from within by the current president. Now, he gazed out at the waters of the Pacific. He could not help but think how lucky they had been. Disaster had been averted when Petland and supporters ousted the Vaz and restored the rights of the people. It was strange to think of the origins of the state, but he would say that it was a worthy one. A state he had come by to truly feel at home in. A home for the lost. And a Siberian spring. We're going to lose a lot of political power here, aren't we? This one's not too bad to do. Assembly of no Novosibirsk. With the new territories comes a vast amount of new people, chief among them many politicians that once held sway in other warlord states. Some of these politicians could theoretically be rehabilitated and used to help administer Central Siberia. Others could even be welcomed into a party, after all, who would be better than as experts on Central Siberian politics. We should hold a conference in Novo Sibirsk, by far the most popular city in the region, to discuss with ourselves and these new politicians about the political integration of the area, as well as to help integrate and normalize those who could be welcomed into a party. <sighs> Coffee is such a good thing. Such a good thing, man. A new course. We've taken many influences from the Americans in recent years, so why not take one more? No one in our party would argue that our administration needs to depart from the track that the tyrant Mikowski had to put it on home. However, there's been a great deal of speculation on what course we could take. Our leader, Nikolai Petlin, has put forward a proposal that has already received a fair amount of traction. A series of programs on public works projects, financial reform, and regional re rebuilding that would be all funded by the government, akin to what some American politicians believe would be best for their own nation. This would ensure that the government would be able to create a responsible economy, and one that would recover from the strains of what was, or has essentially been, anarchy up until now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Goodbye. As well, Lydia Petlin said at the entrance hall to his house, addressing his wife. I'm off, and maybe for some time, I'm... It's going to be a few days, uh, weeks, I don't know. I'll promise you that. I'll be back soon. He regarded his wife with a broad smile on his face. Petlin was proud of her. A dissident in her own right, a powerful, active woman, freed from the clutches of Rajevsky the madman. He shouldn't have to think of what the deranged Vaz had done to her, but she did not tell of her days in Habin much. <clears throat> well, 
See you, dear, D Lydia said as she corrected her husband's tie. Where are you going again? I've been on Magadan for so long that I don't know much about Russia. No, but Let's see the sun, as I call it, dear. I know that I will be far away from you, but this is necessary. Soon you will leave Magadan, and we shall go westwards. The state cannot hold a government from such a remote position such as Magadan. I liked it here, at least. I know. We'll return here someday when Russia is whole again. Perhaps we'll even cross the straits into America, see LA, San Francisco, maybe even Vegas. She smiled a twinkle of enthusiasm in her eyes. It's a promise, dear. It's a promise. Just don't get too attached. Wow, we got three millies, huh? Tanks. Just, just lots of tanks. There you go. Wow, did the Russian People's Union actually win? Well, okay, that's not going to be good. That's not going to be easy then. All right. Assembly of Novosibirsk. <clears throat> the conference at Novosibirsk took place or took place behind closed doors within the old halls of the city's local presidium. Whatever media that Russia had, as well as some foreign outlets from America, trailed the proceedings. All deputies of the Russian National Party refused to comment. Petlin hurried away on the scar before the reporters could even reach him, bodyguards shoving the crowds away from him. Whatever that could be gleaned from the discussions within seemed to uh, <clears throat> speak in favor of reform, although no one knew of its details. Finally, on one crisp morning, Petlin stepped out on the podium, the rest of the Russian National Assembly behind him. People of Russia and Siberia, he began, gathering his strength to address the nation. On or half of it. I stand before you today, the leader of the central of the Siberian National Republic, is presented by the will of arms, he paused. But that will no, be no longer. I hear, declare thusly that political parties are now legal, that the government will now seek approval from its people. We dedicate ourselves to the restoration of a democratic and republican Russia. All eyes were on him. That is all. Cheering broke up as he turned back to face his party. In the middle of cold Siberia was a small spring of warmth. The media did not know of it, but Petlin smiled at their enthusiasm. The Siberian thaw has begun. We get like no political power now, which sucks so much. A uh, corporative federalism? Oh my goodness, the shadow of the Vaz. Mikhail Mikoski was many things. He may have been a tyrant, and he may have been a dictator, but certainly no idiot, nor was he a raving loom. Mikoski, he was smart, tactful, and politically skilled. He spent his time working hard to create and preserve a nucleus of support, one that still regrettably exists despite his removal from power. The shadow of the boss still hangs over our administration, and his supporters hiding inside shadow to prevent us from achieving what needs to be done. They need to be rooted out, exposed for who they are. The laborers need to be rendered defenseless and slighted. Those brave enough to do so are even claiming that the former dictator was falsely imprisoned. These individuals are dangerous, and must be treated with the same degree of severity as a Vaz himself. Absolutely. And I apologize for speaking really fast. I'm just... I don't know. I'm excited. I want to see what happens. Nice. Go ahead and cut you down in half, too. We have more room to grow. Nice. A foundation for all research. The shadow of the Vaz. We need a lot of bodies for this. I'll soon integrate these places too, which sucks, but whatever. And then we'll probably do some more uranium stuff. I could address your uranium problem. Yes, please. Three days left is not too bad. Hundred, almost 200 factories. Not bad. Could be better, but not bad. Could be better. Exercising the shadow. This is ridiculous, Petlin. Alexander Pavlov said to him in his office. The Vaz Mikoski might have been a criminal, but to abolish his shadow is a betrayal to our cause. Pavlov sighed. Let's walk back on this, Petlin, my friend. We must save God the legacy of our predecessors. Mikoski was a good man. And, <clears throat> and without him, the party would not have reached Siberia. He was a criminal, yes, but all he did, he did for the glory of his motherland. I believe you, Pavlov, Petlin replied, his voice calm. However, the comrade, without Mikoski, the Dalstroy would not exist as an entity, the papers. Petlin was exasperated. The papers in the Arkutsk Presidium. Remember that? The papers' trails he burnt to cover his trace. The Soviets might not be our allies, but their insight is important. Mikoski is a criminal, and I will see him tried. No trace of his influence shall remain in this, in my party. I hope you understand. Fine, if you do not recognize his ex existence, then I will not recognize your government, he pointed at Petlin. Listen, Petlin, I never liked you much in the old days, but now there's no reason to hold back. You're not my Vaz, Nikolai Petlin, and I will make sure the laborers know that. The SIA, too. He stormed out the door. Petlin was tempted to call out to him, using the American expression, what was it again? Don't let the door hit your booty on the way out. Um. All Russian Council of cor Corporations, huh? Um, honestly, we get, we lose factory output, but we do get some more political power, so I'm actually not too bad from that one, so. Caging the corporations. One of the ways that Vaz hedged his political power in the nation was making deals with a number of corporations, Russian or otherwise. These corporations contributed generously to his own personal funds, which he used to buy off opponents, intimidate those who wouldn't be bought, and ensure that his grip on power would be never loosened. In return, this, these corporations would be granted pre preferential treatment in the quid pro quo scenario. 
These corporations have, of course, become accustomed to this sort of deal, and now that they were in power, are in what is essentially open revolt due to our refusal to honor the prior deal. Despite their lingering influence in our administration, we need to work to eliminate their legacy in politics, so that we can ensure that the government serves neither the military nor the private sector, but instead the Russian public. Even better fighters. Good. Jolly good. Look at that political power. So, then we get rid of all our things. Yeah, that one. Ready for your Magadan from the Ashes. Uh, there's another one we're getting rid of, too. Um, we get... Uh, 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 promote democratic ideals? One of the main struggles that we face in the Far East, we now face in Central Siberia. Simply put, the Russian people are, for the most part, completely and entirely unfamiliar with it, how democracy works. Thus, our administration needs to focus a significant amount of time on the promotion of the ideals that we espouse. Democracy, liberty, and freedom for all Russians, that is what we envision. And that is what uh, the populace must be led to believe in and to hope in. For if the people can get behind our message, there will be nothing stopping us from establishing a truly free democratic Russian nation. Very true. Cool. Do you both, because we've got a lot more manpower now. It was nice. Happy 1970, though, everybody. Hope you're having a great year. Hundred billion in GDP? Not enough. <laughs> Not enough. Mm, go do that one too. There you go. Promote democratic ideals. Uh, uh, reform the courts. Uh, draft a constitution. Uh, expand the minds first. Expand the minds. Drafting a constitution. Despite the creation of the Siberian Bill of Rights years ago, the former administration under Mikhail Mikhotsky continued to put off writing a constitution for the Russian people, claiming that the people weren't ready for a document as progressive as the constitution. It was an obvious cover for Mikhotsky's true intentions, tyranny and oppression, the submission of the people to his will and his will alone. This is not acceptable even when the former Vaz was doing it then, and now that he's gone, it's certainly not acceptable now. It's time for a constitution, in fact, it's well past the time for a constitution, but now we have a chance to write Mikhotsky's wrongs, so we must draft one that now will form the foundation of a republic in the years to come. Absolutely. As we're finishing coring all this stuff up. This this is not going to be... Batov is going to be... The modern Sur Surverov is not going to be easy to kill off. Oh my goodness. I've, I've fought him against him before. We kind of like each other. Actually, can we peacefully reunify? Oh, I hope we can. I hope we can. I do not... Oh my god. That's so many divisions. Oh my goodness. Godness? Goodness. That's not going to be easy. Reform the courts. To say that the justice system under the tyrant Mikoski was a farce would be too kind. It was more than a farce, a poorly written, hyperbolic work of fiction authored by an uneducated youth that would provide a better framework for justice than the kangaroo courts of former boss held. Justice was not objective. It was served and dispensed virtually directly from Mikoski himself via paired judges and puppet juries, who manipulated outcomes and rid the vaws of his opponents. <clears throat> This has long been one of the darkest stains on the legacy of our party, and hasn't up until this point held up our development of the future. We must ensure that a comprehensive reform of our justice system takes place to root out those who have been uh, done Mikovsky's building, the corrupt, ideological, and cowardly. These are the people who have no business judging whether the Russian citizen is guilty or not. A Siberian Constitution after his declaration at the end of the assembly of Novosibirsk, Petlin had gathered independence, laborers, and even his own wing of the party together to discuss the specifics of a new constitution to replace the old Bill of Rights. In this, Petlin added provisions that defended the rights of free speech, assembly, and the right to organize politically. The laborers grumbled and complained, but they did not have the sole power on the party anymore. The independents, at first wary of Petlin, soon warmed up to him. Finally, after years of dictatorial rule, a leader who would listen to their uh, concerns. Standing in the halls of the Novo Sobiesk Assembly, Petlin remained the previous remained the previous years standing before Mikoski as it presented uh, his idea of a Bill of Rights before the Vaz. Too liberal, the words came back to him. I suspect that you are a socialist, Petlin. He gave him a chuckle. Now, how was he so weak in the same at the same Vaz returned to him, clad in his full glory, Petlin would not submit. The peoples of Russia have their rights, and he shall not deny them their entitlement. He swore that no one shall experience what had happened in Habin ever again. A couple of Siberian deputies approached him, a hammer and sickle pins on the suits. Pelin became weary, but then they, they invited him to dinner. He smiled. Perhaps the communists are not as bad as they say after all. A new democracy is born. For now. Pavlodar, yes. Casually, three billion. Ah, that's alright. I'll go to the next one, too. Oh, and I popped my feet, foot. But it is quite sad when you run out of coffee. Oh, do we do get the talks? Oh, that's good. We actually can do it peacefully, hopefully. Hmm. They also integrated Orenburg, huh? Well, uh, cooperative federalism. 
from the top to the bottom of our administration, from the governmental halls in our major cities to the most basic of village administrative centers. There needs to be cooperation after all. All individuals, and by extension all governments, have to share a set of issues that need to be dealt with. Thus, we should begin implementing a new system. Based on the American model of cooperative federalism, that is, all federal, state, and local governments should work together cooperatively and collectively in order to solve problems shared among them. This policy is aimed at preventing the respective levels of government from dealing with uh, problems separately, instead of promoting an atmosphere of collaboration and trust between the highest government officials and the people that they represent. Ah, the oil crisis. Not a problem for Russia, at least for us right now. Um, you can do that too. Uh, we still, we're still very high, huh? Alright. If you want to about better industrial expertise, please go ahead. Excellente. 9.6 is not bad. Could be higher, though. Any more? Oh, yes, we do have more room. There you go. And we'll do Chase the Sun next, too. Industrial experience will go up, which is very nice. Okay, 3% of the yearly cost of $150 million. Millions, I'm not concerned about. Billions are what I'm more concerned about than anything else, so. And then Bomb the Eagles. Yeah. I'm going to say this one for last, because the Far North Construction Fund is not bad. It just helps us produce and construct more stuff faster, so. It's a lot of manpower. Bomb the Eagles. The eagle has been long emblematic of the U.S. of A., but it also represents the Russian people. The eagle is chief among birds, the king of the skies, is a noble beast, filled with endurance, resilience, and power. The American people are represented by the eagle, but so too should the Russians be. By extension, the two eagles of the world should not go alone in the darkness, that is, the international community. <clears throat> Really meaningful. Real reform. Surely the Americans will now see a valuable ally in our administration now and in the future. We should reach out to them once again and continue to tie ourselves to them. The future of Russia is with with the organization of free nations. Hopefully. <laughs> you hope so. Or a lot of this has been for naught, so. Are we missing anything? Tanks? Yeah. Even cast seems to be doing okay -ish as well. There we go. Um... Can you just not get to them in time? Yeah, can't cover the army, that's fine. Um, chaos, yeah. Nice. Better already, nice. Bond the eagles. Nice. Lots and lots of already. Um, yeah, might as well, since, we, since we're here anyway, so. <coughs> Disband Ulstroy. The Ulstroy, in the name of a work for pay construction program, and in effect, a highly efficient series of forced labor pro camps, as one of the perhaps most damaging effects of Mikowski's legacy. The massive complexes that have, admittedly, granted us many economic boons, have also long acted as a symbol of oppression for the Russian people, regardless of creed or political affiliation. No more. The Ulstroy shall be disbanded if its officials prosecute to the fullest extent from the law. Uh and the people trapped within the programs free to work where they please, returning to families and hometowns. No longer will innocents be forced to ter work terrible conditions for almost nothing in return. Word from Washington. It seems that our efforts to strengthen ties with the U.S. have been borne fruit. Our foreign offices received word from American diplomats that they are interested in increasing economic and diplomatic relations between our two nations. All that remains now is to sort out of the details, but that shouldn't be too much of a challenge for the foreign ministry. This could be the start of a beautiful relationship indeed. Wonderful. Wonderful. Hundred four billion, huh? Hundred five billion. That's not enough. We want more. The redemption of Hobbin, the city of Hobbin, in the heart of Manchuria, is a city of many things. Paramount among them, unfortunately, is the legacy of the Russian fascist party, created by the ridiculous character that was once Konstantin Rozhevsky. <clears throat> Because of the origin of the party there, many in the international scene, let alone in Russia, know it as a center of what was once the organization that systematically terrorized those that it believed to be its ideological opponents. But Hobbin is so much more than that. A center of Russian emigre culture. A home to many, including our own dear leader. A place where cultural roads cross with one another. Hobbin should not be remembered solely as a birthplace of the Russian fascist party. We must ensure that the memory of where we had our humble beginnings is known as a positive, but not a negative one. Yeah, to compete against those guys, we just gotta keep building. Build, 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 towards freedom and unity. We've done lots to further the cause of democracy and freedom within the territory that we control. We've reformed the dark stains left by the legacy of the so-called Vaz Mikovsky, ensuring that there is fair justice, a fair economy, and a fair constitution that will ensure the rights of the people and of democracy in the decades to come. We've worked to depoliticize the army, destroy the legacy of Mikovsky, and clean the heritage of our origins. Much work still needs to be done, but we can, if for a moment, take a rest and admire what we've accomplished. We are on the road to establishing a free and democratic country. Russia will be liberated. Criminals no longer. 
but the bare feeling of lives without shackles was new to Ivanov. The Dostroy had put him to work digging at railways and pointless public pro works for his association with the NKVD. He toiled day and night, under starvation rations that sure that he would collapse at any given moment. His body was weak, and the work certainly did him no favors. Ivanov looked at his shoulders and arms, bony without much substance or muscle. The suit they ladled out, thin and unappetizing, did not provide for much sustenance. Then armed guards of the Siberian National Republic strode into the camp, arresting everyone. Some of the wardens ran to the woods after a gunfight with the army. Ivanov heard the rogue uh, guards had been detained with awaiting trial, same as their boss. The axe startled him. Justice in the depths of the Russian Far East was not unlikely. It was impossible. Yet there he was, the soldiers casting off his shackles and delivering him away from that heck. Now that his only concern was that he needed a job. Surely, however, President Petland and his Prime Minister would take care of that. No more shadows, no more domination by the powers that only sought power. Only justice remained. Not bad. At least for the love of God. Uh, peacefully reunified, but members of Hobbin. The scene was perhaps familiar. Petlin. Remember the evenings and nights in Hobbin as the Russian fascist party celebrated its zenith, a swastika. The hook cross ran through it by electrified lights, shone like a Christmas tree in the freezing winters or winds of Hobbin. Winters. Yet they stood, neither fire nor flames warmed their hearts, but through their strength of will alone, love too. Love, the strongest of all emotions. It was love that brought them onto Russia again. It was love that made them think of Russia when the Japanese and Chinese ignored and discriminated against them. Yet, it was love that also begat uh, Rajevsky's obsession with the pure Russia that justified the Dostoy's atrocities. As Petlin and the people of Magdan held the candles in remembrance of such tragedies and feats of will, they closed their eyes and prayed. A choir song, soft hymns to God, of forgiveness and repentance, Petlin closed his eyes. He remembered his own past, an organizer, a voice that once spoke to him, of him, with warmth and looked out for him. And Mikoski of Rajevsky. They were young then, and also foolish, so foolish, so, so foolish. When he opened them, and op uh, the patriarch led the flock to the Lord's Prayer. Petlin followed, and forgive, our, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgiveness? What? Siberian sports. And you should have a look at the Krasnoyarsk hockey team. Foreign Minister Yuri Vlasov said, pointing to the Krasnoyarsk on a map of Siberia for the businessmen in the Magadan hotel room they were sitting in. Yes, they were in a very far-off location, but they are very tough and hardly nonetheless. Hardy, nonetheless, and they will make an excellent athlete if given the proper training. The businessman in question, Jason Morrison, stared at the map. Are you, are you sure it's going to be worth it? He asked after a long pause. Of course, with American money in the team's coffers. They'll have the coaches and equipment they need to beat stars in the international trade. Sorotsin. Am I missing anything else? Vlasov replied. Uh, Morrison looked at Sorotsin. The city of Krasnorovsk has fallen on hard times, and the sports team is no exception. The economic minister said, If you invest, even to something as ephemeral sports, it'll go a long way to getting the city back on track to being as one of the greatest industrial city cities in Siberia. Another pause followed as Morrison considered the city's value in the team. We'll start at a hundred grand a month. If the team shows signs of improving after three, I'll increase it to two. The room muttered in agreement as the two ministers parted the room together. It was important for a new nation like Siberia to get as many powerful allies as it could. While sports may seem trivial, that businessmen were willing to invest in a field like this was a sign that much closer to ties of the U.S. will be made in the coming months. And perhaps the citizens may benefit from such bonds as well. Yes. Towards unity and freedom, and then soon, we'll be home again. A stiff wind blew as Vitaly slowly but surely made his way towards the door, shivering and wrapping his arms around himself. He was here. He was really here. After all the time he spent wasting away in the Dostroy, and all the time praying death would come for him just a moment sooner, at long last he was returning to the only place that still mattered to him. Home. It was strange, really, how it had become such an unfamiliar word to him. So long he had spent not daring to speak about it, only barely the chance. Chancing to think of it on occasion, as though afraid of showing too much attachment, might condemn him, them to the same fate. Them. His family. Oh God, his family. How much had changed in the time he had been away? Would they recognize him? Did they even remember him? One, two, three knocks on the door, and he lowered his hand, anxiously waiting for a response. Even a go away would suffice. He just wanted to know that they were still alive. Family. Finally. After a short time, that felt like forever. The door swung open. Hello, what can I do for... The woman who opened the door gasped, her eyes going wide, as though she had seen a ghost. She may as well have. Oh, how he had missed his wife. Did Sophia still love him, he wondered, as he still loved her? Past her. Vitaly could see the two teenagers walking up, confused as to the commotion. His son, Vitaly... Valentin and his daughter, Anna. He locked eyes with the former and the older of the two. The boy's voice was an eerie reflection of his own, young against old, curious against cautious, fearless against fearful. He had he had he looked like that before? What had been like that had he what had before been like? He could not remember. So instead he smiled and only said he, the only thing he could. I'm home, everybody. I'm home. After being in a prison camp. Welcome to Burgundian system. No more Burgundian system. Oh, no more fun. Voroshilov. Voroshilov. Oleg. Ivanov, nice. Awesome. Wait, did we not get the political power? Maybe we did, maybe we didn't. I don't think we got the political power. Oh, maybe we were supposed to get political power. Yeah, we go stability and stuff like that. Oh, that sucks. So we got one more month, and yeah. We'll see if we can actually reunify. 
peacefully. Oh god, I hope we can. I really... Oh, yeah. Enemy mentor, protege, president. Do you visit me just to gloat? Patlin Mikowski shot him a venomous look. When I am done, you come to me. Foreign minister, deputy, protege, but above all else... <clears throat> A traitor to the ideals. A traitor to Hobbin. Makovsky rose from his bed, but collapsed right back onto it. When Petland moved to help him, he held his hand out. I do not need a traitor's help, he coughed blood. I am close to dying, and I see my vision for Russia burning before my eyes. Its awesomeness stands before me, yet I can do nothing. Makovsky, the name of sounded strange on Petland's tongue. Were those that stand for the memories of Hobbin let the pressure it heaved upon us against our own people? If a decent man sees a dull straw and, uh, and condemns it not... Would it make him true to the memories of Leba and Habin, where women sold themselves on the streets out of desperation? Tell me that, he held his breath. The vows of all Russians. You have no right to address me as such. You lowly worm, low to the low. You to say that I despise you would be an understatement, Petlin. The feeling is mutual, Mikowski. They stared at each other, too, angry to continue the conversation. Trust me, with Russia. I will take care of her well. A light of sympathy burned Mikowski's eyes. Perhaps, Petlin, if you do not succeed, I will torment you in heck. Remember that now. Leave me, Mr. President. Mentor and protege reconcile with one common wish. Not bad. Ah, very, very good. As we're building more infrastructure, actually, you know what, just in case, we have to fight these guys, get some radar, and infrastructure can sort of wait-ish. Yeah, just like spread it out so that we can have um, areas around here too. That'd be nice. That'd be very nice. Uh, we actually do have a tank division. You know what, I should've done this earlier. Take them all out, there you go. Oh, we're getting close, everyone. We're getting close, 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 close. Oh, I guess I better motorize. There you go. I have a feeling I've made too many of these divisions. Go with two. There you go. Just in case. You just never know. Nice. Well, everyone, it is 1971. Let's hopefully... Come on, please, please reunify peacefully. Um, also, if you hear sounds, sounds in the background, it's probably my cat, uh, huh, uh, knocking stuff over, so, uh, nap, would they like to nap, if you want to go that, please go ahead, so, we, the Russian one is, these guys, the Russian people's union, and our weight is a beer into the planet weight, so, we have a lot more weight, which is really nice, which I don't remember how that's constructed, doesn't matter though, doesn't really matter. Um, PP, electronics, yeah, I could probably use that. Diplomatic concessions. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Tension is 15. Mutual receptiveness is 15. I wish it wasn't 30 days, but it makes sense why it has to take so long. It really does. Mm, poverty. Oh, it might actually get better. Maybe. We'll see what happens. Oh, that's not bad. That's actually not bad. Modern research facilities. And politicized academia. Nice. Cool. Oh, come on, please, come on, come on, get more receptive, get more receptive. I wonder what they're going to propose to. Border access treaty, mutual training, pro-unification factions, access to foreign goods. What did that one? We'll do it immediately. Did they lower our weight? No, oh, uh oh. Well, that's not good. Did they propose nothing? Maybe they didn't propose anything. Uh, cabinet positions. Another day passes where the Russian People's Union entices us into surrounding our sovereignty with honeyed words. This time, however, their offer seems almost gregarious. Their trusted word that Nikolai Petlin and his close associates will acquire high positions in the Russian People's Union government through their diplomats' platitudes and unconditional generosity are just as plain as ever. Perhaps there's merit in heeding the words just this one time. We'll go with that one. Tensions of 30. Now it's back on 15. So as long as we as long as we get the perception that's much higher and tensions goes low. I think even if like we'll annex them probably. Hmm. What are we missing here besides tanks and casts? Yeah, we need to get more tanks. It's only seventy-five too. It's not honestly that much. All right, guys. What's next? We're gonna have billion. That's actually pretty darn good. We're pretty much maxed out currently, which sucks, but whatever. Happy seventy-one though. Happy nineteen seventy-one. Declaration of friendship, pro unification factions. Future training, maybe? Maybe? Please? Yes? Please? Ah, yay! They accept! Yay! It's not much, but it's something. So, what do they propose then? 
Public support for unification increases. Yay! Good. I was gonna back over here to industry. Oh, let's go to research, actually. That's why I grabbed this. That's good. And grab you. Yeah. Jelena. Jelena. Nice. Oh, we got plenty of guns. Holy crap. I'll go down to five. Screw it. Go to there. Go to there. We need way more tanks. Uh, we're good on this stuff. We're good on that stuff too. That's fine for now. I'll uh, get some more rubber. Help of the Japanese, which we don't really want to help out, but whatever. Fine. That's fine. 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 I right, do this too. Make sure we got good roads. Roads are important. <coughs> nice, 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 nice. All right. Friendship. Thirty-five is not bad. It's not great. They agree to join exercises. Yes, yes, yes. Good stuff. Increasing weight. They, did they go down to 52? Join exercises? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. 45 is not bad. I wish it was a little higher, though. I'll be honest. I really do wish it was higher. Uh, tanks. We're already out of tanks, so I don't want to really edit this one. Because it's just... We don't have the materials for it. So, goodbye, goodbye. How many APCs do we have? 1,600? That's not bad. Uh, let's change you up. So we have just a little more armor on you guys. A little nicer. Screw, we're out of tanks. Whatever. Uh, engineers... Fine, it's fine. There you go, nice. Now we're out of it. Now we're out of stuff. Great, great. <laughs> 55 is not bad. That's good. That's good. Let's be friends. Mm. Border access, maybe? Yes, no, maybe so. Accepted, yes, yes. Oh, wow. Here's by 20. And there goes Iran. Can we just send you support? No, we cannot. Like, with the second West Russian War mod, if you have that installed, you can do this one, but... Oh, uh, it's this one. Accept the deal. We'll do that one. I'd love to get involved in Iran. Uh, but yeah, 85 is not bad. After this one, we are going to go and do uh, hold a preliminary conference, maybe. So for this one, a successful preliminary unification conference has been held. And so yeah, that's 45 days. A successful the nation with a higher diplomatic weight shall annex the other. We're literally more than double their weight, so I'm not really worried about that at all. Tanks, APCs, guns are guns are actually fine. 85,000 guns. Uh, we have extra fighters though. This is just in case though. Oh my goodness. Uh, transistor competing though. Let's get this one too. Artillery, jets, trucks. Uh, preliminary conference. We got to at this point. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, a victory for diplomacy. Military access. That's good. Bot top isn't as insane as he might be. Maybe. Uh, uh, surplus? Yeah, thank you. Go and train as well. You don't need to train. A lot of these APCs need to train, which is not bad at all, so. Alright, we'll see what happens. Oh, they, their weight went down a little bit more, too. Look at that. Nice. Actually, so where are they at right now? They We really like each other. Up to 100, maybe a minimum 142 divisions. Obviously, a lot of these divisions are not great. But their main divisions are not bad. They, they less, less manpower, but they made more divisions, obviously. Um, hmm. Nice. Did I risk this? Now we're gonna get like one point. Ah, still not bad. One point eight six is actually really good. Holy crap! We actually have some f uh, reserves. Reserves. I uh, love the reserves. Foundations of the conference. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Please don't screw this up. Please don't screw this up. Please. Measure rejection. <gasps> That's not bad, but only future knows. Oh crap. Uh. Disaster on the home front. Well, exact thing I wanted to avoid. That was such a waste. That was such a waste. God dang the AI. Man, I, I apologize for that. I apologize for that. I tried my best, guys. I really did. 
There's nothing we can do about it. I wanted to do it peacefully. Batov, he seems so nice. But then his true identity came out. And I know this is going to be absolutely worthless building this stuff here, but whatever. Good, good, good. Um, get some more, maybe, air. Since we've got nothing else to build, we're done building facilities and millies for now. Um, overall, we're, we're pretty good at, like, this stuff. So At least we got decrypted. That's nice. Which means we won't be able to cut too much more for a while, so... Oh, there goes, and Iran's gonna kill itself. Okay, then. Um. Guns now? We're pretty good. Uh, sure. Yeah, we'll keep doing joint exercises before we kill each other off. Yeah, totally. Well, at least we'll break their ciphers. At least that's a positive here. Yeah, that's fine. Raise emergency reserves will be important, too. I mean, our army's not bad, it's just not great. We definitely don't have the division count like they do. Mmm, that's not gonna be good, no, is it? I've got a lot of things there. I mean, all of our guys are 40 combos, which is not bad, but still. You know what, throw a military, please. It gives you a little bit more defense. It's not worth a lot, but it gives you more defense, a little more breakthrough, more soft attack, not very much. It gives you a little more air, uh, air attack. You lose some more organization, we get more HP as well, so... And it doesn't cost that much. I want just a little bit more defense, just in case. You can't trust Batov, a liar, a snake. That's what he is. There you go. <clears throat> can we build any nuclear reactors? Darn it, we cannot. Oh yeah, we can. Heck yeah. Blow the place up, man. There you go. So yeah, we can't cut down the deficit anymore, which sucks, because we got to expend more money. Region integration, nothing there yet. Relations with America. Oh, yeah. You guys keep going. I'll just do that. There you go. Don't bother us with that again. Relations with America. We're still high. That's very high. Yay. Grab some jets. There you go. <clears throat> or whatever it was. Tanks, maybe. We buy tanks. Gas is looking pretty bad. Ah, that's actually looking a lot better, though. There you go. <sighs> Why did they have to do it? Snakes, man. Snakes. All snakes. You know what we do with snakes? We, we cut the head off of the snake. Not really much else we can do here with this stuff, too. Um, honestly, I think I'll probably go... We get better, better engineers, because they're going to be attacking us all willy-nilly. And it's going to be so painful. But if you guys can actually just, like, vamoose through them, that'd be great. How are we supposed to hold out against these guys? Rush them out. Get to the front lines, because we're going to need numbers. The last war, we can, only hope that, we can only hope that it is us that will win. 17 billion. Oh, wow. Oh, because we pu pushed out a lot of soldiers. Strike Russia. Oh, yeah. Don't train anymore. Don't train. We're going to spend a lot of money now. <coughs> um, I don't want to wait. Hey, a decrease of poverty, though. That's pretty good. Do us for economists. Nice. 5.3 billion? Yeah, that's not great, but whatever. Let time go on. They're probably honestly going to strike us first. I hope we're not on defense, but... Or I hope we're not the ones attacking, but... Whatever. Yeah, that's not going to be looking great for us. I mean, guys are 40 combo with. It should be too bad. But still. But still. Yeah, some of these divisions were god-awful. Yeah, the 20 combo with. Looks like, yep. Definitely 20 combo with. And they went to war with us, which is fine. Um, let's play it safe. Go straight across if you can. Help them out. Help them out. There you go. You should be able to win there now. There you go. And. Come on. There you go. Nice. 
cover this entire side here. We don't lose. There you go. There you go, that's nice. Crush and kill, crush and kill. What do we have here? Proof American Relations? Don't really feel like it right now, I'll be honest. Ah, nice. That wasn't too bad so far. 6,000 versus a quarter million? That's, uh, not bad. Uh, not bad. Definitely successful there. Um, good god, they have so many divisions. It's ridiculous. Come down here. It's gotta be smart with what we do here. Because if I do a general attack, it's going to just ruin all the manpower that we have. Uh, yeah. Let's, let's you guys move. Let them move. Oh, they're there. Three. Two. Well, I'll just go here first. And then go there. We can circle six divisions there, would be, which would be good. Better motorized. Nice. Go to that. Not the move. Total six divisions there. Nice. Good, 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 good. Right there. Go. Bing, bong. We can circle quite a few divisions right there, too. If we are smart. Sure, why not? Cool. Yeah, as you can tell, we don't have a lot of divisions. I mean, the guys are thick, which we love the thick guys, but like, they're not big enough. There we go. Go in, go in, go in, go in, go in, go in, go in. Nice, there you go. Uh, Italy's required nuclear weaponry, which we don't care about. You guys go right there. You guys right there. You guys right there. Nice, good stuff, good stuff. We've only killed off 400,000 of them, 123 divisions left. Not great, but whatever. Um. Come up here. I'm sorry, it's going to take a while. Like, this this episode's long. It's a long episode. I'm not just planning on this episode being this long, but oh well. It is what it is. Hey, another division. Nice. I guess you're here, anyways. Uh, one, two, three. Right there. Nice. Go, 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 go. Chelyabinsk. Yeah, they're going to fall. Whether they like it or not. Go in, started going in here. It's only two divisions we're going to take out, but whatever. There you go. Yay! Chill your bits, because ours. Mm, I just want to do a general attack. How much more map do they have? Flint. Oh my gosh, I have so much. Can you guys just, like, rip them apart up here? I just want to kill them off, if possible. Maybe we'll do that. We could try it. Yeah, overall not too bad. Not a lot of red. Some red. Not too much red. Our ca couches are going to drastically increase, but you know, oh my gosh. Yes, yeah, so those are theirs. That's pretty drastic. Over 700,000. A second, hopefully, we hit 800,000 soon ish. A little more records. We did decrypt their ciphers, which helps out so much. Overran some more divisions. Nice. Yep, over 800,000. Soon we'll be at 900,000. Um, their manpower pool should be just dro yep, dropped significantly. 50,000 compared to 180,000 we just saw a little bit earlier. Nice. Well, having the cipher done is, definitely helps out. Definitely helps out. Be charismatic. Yep, 
Yeah. Feels looking okay-ish. Are they at a million yet? Oh, they're 1.2 million. Nice. Now we've bought roughly the same amount of divisions. Nice. I think we've won this one. Uh, but they're out of manpower, so... You know, I don't understand. We could have done this peacefully. We literally could have done this peacefully. We were all the way up to the preliminary conference, and they still said no. Look at what Bogtov done, has done. <clears throat> I wanted peace. We wanted peace. Anyone who wanted Russia to be reunified wanted peace. Until we killed the Germans, of course. But God dang it, you suck of a suck of a rocker. Or a rock sucker. And now they're down to 66 divisions. One half million have died. Not nearly enough. Three, two, one. Let's grow. Obviously, our cryptography, crypt cryptology is done already, but still. Yeah, they're looking really bad. They've run out of equipment. 59 divisions left, which is not bad. It now dropped to 57. Six. Five. Can we get a four? Maybe? No? Yes. I mean, it helps if they have no manpower. Actually, how close are they capitulating? Not that close. Eh, yeah, close ish. They're still looking pretty good. It's pretty, pretty darn good. So, since we're here. Cool. <clears throat> Oh, and there goes another division right there. Casually, can we get rid of 2 million enemy Russians? We haven't even taken 100,000 casualties yet. And if you want to about better research facilities, please go right ahead. Cutting edge modern research facilities? Awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. They've got to give up soon. We've not hit 2 million yet. Darn it. 1.9. We're close. We're super close. Oh, and we got it. But I think that's going to be it for us, my friends. We did it again. <clears throat> the National Republic unites Russia. Ooh. Land of the free, the drive home. The scenery outside the car was beautiful. The thin patches of snow given away to the budding green grass of the early spring. The buzzing of the bees hummed along the window pane to the car, losing their song in the clang and din of the engines. Petlin almost dozed off, and the route home wasn't even that long. Lydia was waiting there, finally. For the first time in years, they may have peace. Free from the tyrants, false missiles, and enemies, a quiet after years of screaming and chaos. People waved to his car as it passed by, some spat. <clears throat> the evening cast long shadows over the fences and bales of hay. And the final patches of coal dissolved under the sullen end. Gaze of the setting sun. Petlin sat back, letting the cushions of his seat absorb his weight. He looked at his watch. Still a few minutes before their home was in sight. <clears throat> he closed his eyes and let sleep take him. The car jutted and shook, but after a day of work, he made no finer bed. Petlin smiled at the thought of the evening. Friends, comrades, and his wife at the hearth. As warmth promises to wash over the cold that has submerged them. For this evening and many more to come. And my friends, <clears throat> now that concludes the ca this episode and the campaign. Like I said, we could just keep going on and like pushing out the Germans and stuff, but we did that last episode. And uh, <clears throat> at the time of the scoring, there's no unique content for Petlin, but it's all right. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. We can never cut down the deficit, but it is what it is. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous rest of your day.